Good morning. Are the wicked found among God's people? Well, today we're at Jeremiah 5, verses 26 to 29. Let's see what it says. For among my people are found wicked men. They lie in wait as one who sets snares. They set a trap. They catch men. As a cage is full of birds, so their houses are full of deceit. Therefore, they have become great and grown rich. They have grown fat. They are sleek. Yes, they surpass the deeds of the wicked. They do not plead the cause, the cause of the fatherless, yet they prosper, and the right of the needy they do not defend. Shall I not punish them for these things, says the Lord? Shall I not avenge myself on such a nation as this? Some people are surprised to think that among God's people we might find some wicked people in the batch. But again, we need to read the Bible and it won't take us too long to see that there are wicked people in all the batches pretty much. All through the Bible, among God's people, we find, we find the clean, the unclean, the righteous, the wicked. It's all, they're all there, every last one. Within his people, they're setting traps, they're catching men. Verse 27 was interesting. As a cage is full of birds, so their houses are full of deceit. Therefore, they have become great and grown rich. Back there in Revelation 18, uh, we find that Babylon is like a cage, like a cage full of every unclean bird and so on the demons have inhabited um, a large segment of the churches. That's another study. But it's interesting here to see the wicked all the way through. They are, there's some mixed in the troops. You know, God's eye is on his people. Among the people, there are the righteous and the unrighteous. And they're always there mixed together. But you know, his eye is on the sparrow. His eye is on the people who serve him. Even when there's a prevailing wickedness all around, he knows the hearts of those who serve him. There are times when God's people are spiritually prosperous, and other times when it seems like wickedness and worldliness prevail. We may feel like very small fish in a very big pond, but he has a place for us. And if we're being faithful in the things he assigns us, whether they're large or small, that's, that's what he wants. That's what we need to do is just be faithful to him all the way through, and he'll take care of the rest. We don't need to sweat the big pieces. We just need to be faithful with our pieces. Many times our pieces are very small pieces but they're not small in God's sight. He that is faithful in least is also faithful in much. We need to be faithful wherever he places us. Let's pray together. Dear Father in heaven, thank you for your mercies toward us. Uh, whatever time in history we live in, whatever the prevailing spiritual ethos among your people is, uh, we, we can be faithful ourselves, Lord. Send your spirit to us. Be with your whole church, Lord, but please be with each one of us individually. Help us so that we can serve you even in tiny, tiny things. And Lord, we just would be faithful in whatever place you put us. May your blessing be upon those that are hearing this, uh, these thoughts this morning. Bless them in their day. Give them spiritual insight. Get, help them to be a light uh, amidst the strange lights of this world. Help them to be the right light. Thank you for hearing our prayers, Lord. In Jesus' name we, we ask for this. Amen. So, in the end, we are stewards over our own hearts. May God help us to seek Jesus and be true to him in whatever place in his vineyard he's placed us. God be with you today.